Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I want to talk to you primarily about Gaza and Israel today. I'm going to be speaking a little bit about Yemen too and the assassination in Syria of an Iranian official, but it's going to be primarily about Gaza and Israel tonight. I'm going to start off with Gaza and the latest developments on the ground. We've had some serious developments in Gaza. Firstly, we've had two confirmations from Al-Qassam Brigades and uh, Saraya Al-Quds, the armed wing of the, of the PIJ about their actions in Gaza. The main one was from Kata'ib al-Qassam, where they detonated the building with 15 Israeli soldiers. They also attacked three troop carriers, and they attacked a tank with Yassin 105 missiles. They also used side bombs against Israeli soldiers and anti-personnel weapons. When it comes to Saraya al-Quds, the armed wing of the PIJ, it was mostly to do with mortar shellings and with sniper activity in Gaza. With regards to the building that was detonated by Hamas, by the way, by Al-Qassam brigades, most of them are completely dead. They've confirmed that all of them are casualties, but most of them are dead because the hit was really, really big. With regards to the Israeli prisoners, yesterday Al-Qassam brigades released a video telling Israel that we're going to tell you the fate, what the fate is for the following prisoners, and they released names. Today they confirmed that seven Israeli prisoners in Gaza that are held by the resistance were killed due to Israeli strikes. They said previously we've lost contact with the group that was protecting them. They confirmed that their fighters who were protecting them were martyred and that these people were killed because of the Israeli attacks in Gaza. That's in the past two weeks approximately. And they said that they released three names, but they will be releasing further four names in the coming days. They also said in their statement that Israel is trying to reduce the price that it has to pay to release uh, Palestinian prisoners from Israeli prisons, including ones with heavy sentences and ones who with uh, administrative detention. But they emphasized with their statement that regardless of how many prisoners of Israel that Israel kills deliberately, and so far they confirmed that they killed approximately over 70. I spoke about approximately 80 previously. Probably Al-Qassam Brigades did not include the ones that Israel killed after they fled and the other Israeli prisoners that were killed who were held by other Palestinian resistance groups. They're probably just talking about what they're holding as a resistant movement in uh, Gaza. They told Israel, if you think you're going to, in short words, pay a lesser price by killing more of your prisoners, you think we won't have uh, a, a higher demand, you're wrong. Even if we're left with very few of your prisoners in Gaza, the price for the Palestinian uh, prisoners, the price for your prisoners, in return for you releasing Palestinian prisoners from Israeli prisons will be higher, similar to what they did with Gilad Shalit in 2011. Back then, Israel released over 1,000 Palestinian prisoners in return for, in exchange for one Israeli soldier. So obviously, Israel thinks, and we spoke about it previously, they want to get rid of their prisoners to reduce the price that they have to pay, thinking that the Palestinian resistance will fall uh, to this trap. What they're doing, in effect, is they're further dividing the Israeli society, creating more distrust from everyone in anything in Israel when it comes to politics and military and security establishment, because people already lost faith in the Israel establishment since this before this genocide. We were talking about last year and the last two years with the judicial uh, reforms. This is coming, by the way, and all of these attacks in Gaza and them killing Israelis and Israel withdrawing from multiple places. Ynet, the Yedeot Ahronot website, they're reporting that Hamas members are handing themselves in in Khan Yunus and they're providing information. They're handing themselves in to Israel. Imagine that. So they're facing all of this resistance. They can't control certain areas. They withdraw from them. All they have is slight invasions, then the retractions. Withdrew the complete um, uh, brigades from Hayy Zaytun. Now they try to attack it again. All they do is bomb the places, cause destruction. And the resistance is still there, by the way, because they had great intel. 
they withdrew the paratrooper uh, division and now they're saying Hamas members are uh, handing themselves in and giving them supposedly information. Well, even if that's true, let's say, let, let, let's uh, believe Israel, that's true. Well, you're still facing resistance. Clearly, it's doing nothing. Taking some Hamas captives is clearly doing nothing in terms of uh, activity on the ground and the level of resistance uh, from the Palestinians with all their armed resistance uh, groups. Another very interesting development we had is there was a report in Ynet, Yedi'ut Ahranot, the Israeli website, that says Israel released dozens of administrative detention prisoners, Palestinians, because there is a space crisis in Israeli prisons. Itamar Ben Gvir, the Minister of uh, National Security, he criticized it, saying it's a gesture for Ramadan. They denied it. They said, no, 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 no. We have a crisis, definitely. And these people were um, released because there was a crisis. What's the background of this? Well, number one, we've never had reports previously that any of Israel's prisons have crisis. As a matter of fact, they'll create concentration camps if they have a crisis. It's not like they care. That's number one. Two, this could be something related to the ongoing negotiations as a gesture to show that we are willing to release. Hamas probably demanded them releasing some administrative detention prisoners. For those of you who don't know, administrative detention is very common in Israel. They imprison Palestinians without a trial, without charges, without see them seeing any of their family members, no legal aid, no nothing. No one knows their whereabouts and they can constantly extend it every six months. This is Israel for you. However, obviously, Itamar ben Kvir thinks it's a gesture. He's probably right, but Israel, official Israel, denies to say the least. This is coming at the same time that one of his ministers, one of his party members, who is a minister, is a national heritage minister. His name is Amichai Eliyahu. He made a statement to the press saying, we need to erase Ramadan. It's like they have a complex with, uh, they have a problem with religion itself. That's why you see them uh, siding with the Islamophobes and the Islam haters all across the world love Israel because they constantly attack anything related to Islam. Which leads us to Yemen. Yemen has been a front that hasn't been quiet and made a significant effect, a big impact during this genocide alongside Hezbollah. But Yemen's effect, Yemen's impact was more significant. It led to the creation of the Genocide Coalition. Why? Because they wanted to protect the trade of Israel, the money for Israel and themselves, instead of going to stop the genocide state. But every time they get attacked more and more, they raise the bar up. So what are we having now? Well, underwater missiles, torpedo-like missiles, suicide boats, and they're increasing the usage of cruise missiles, which makes all of their attacks against the genocide coalition more and more effective. This is coming at the same time that the uh, senior Pal Lebanese official, the foreign minister, he said that France is trying to reach a diplomatic solution between obviously Hezbollah, Israel, with regards to all of this tension, and he said, if Lebanon is attacked, we won't be silent, we will retaliate. And that Hezbollah and the Yemenis told you, if you if this genocide stops, we will also stop from our end. So you're having a more firm stance coming out from the Lebanese government, which is strong and sending a strong message to Israel. Israel always worked on the division in Lebanon and hoped to spread more hatred towards Hezbollah, and that's clearly not working to a very large extent due to Hezbollah's very highly calculated attack against Israel and them not going on a full-out war. That would attract a very, very heavy Israeli bombardment of Lebanon. The final thing that I want to talk to you about is Israel is continuing the assassinations, the targeted assassinations. They targeted Banyas city in uh, Syria, killing several Iranian officials. This time, obviously, they don't admit. They just say reports. 
However, it's clear that they're continuing uh, targeting and killing senior figures to do with Iran and the resistance. What will we see with regards to the retaliation? We're still not sure. So far, we haven't seen an intense response from Hezbollah for the big massacres that happened. Obviously, we've had the UAV in Haifa yesterday, a couple of attacks on Miron uh, Air Command Base. However, it wasn't to the level that people were expecting. These were the main things that I want to talk to you in this uh, video about. In the live stream tonight, I will be talking about the updates from the meeting from Russia, all of the Palestinian political groups. They made a statement what we can understand, gauge from it, what's expected alongside a couple of other updates. So join me. Members and subs can ask questions and participate in my live streams. They're usually for you, my viewers. And I will see you soon in the next video. Take care.